Hello, welcome back. I'm Charles Showalter. You're listening to the Union Edge Labor's Talk Radio. Thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate that. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Just type in the Union Edge. Folks, uh, it's with great pleasure that I get to reintroduce uh, Admiral Joe Sustak to the Union Edge. Admiral, welcome back. Hello, Admiral. Oops. We may have lost him. But in the meantime, we're going to try and get him back. Um, but uh, we were supposed to have Admiral Joe Sustak with us. I was just talking to him a few minutes ago. Uh, for anybody here in the Pennsylvania area, the, uh, the Admiral is actually walking across the state, um, which kind of makes me wonder as an ex-ground pounder uh, how a Navy guy is going to take care of his feet because anybody who's been a ground pounder knows that you have to take care of your feet, and uh, that's a long story. So, um, But in any case, so... We're going to encourage the Admiral to make sure that he changes his socks and make sure that he uh, keeps uh, dry boots. Admiral, you're with us. Charles, I am. I'm sorry. I'm sloshing along here, uh, walking, and uh, sometimes to cut out things, I put it on mute, and I think that's what I did. I'm sorry. Not a problem, Admiral. Not a problem. We appreciate you being with us. You are actually out there walking across the state of Pennsylvania. You know, sir, as a uh, former ground pounder, I want to make sure that you got plenty of dry (laughs) boots and socks, okay? I could have used them last night. I was down the Chester Springs Trail about 2 o'clock in the morning, went under this tunnel where the trail went, and sloshing through water about uh, 8, 9 inches high going into my boots. I had cotton socks. Should have had wool. Yeah, there you go. You know, And I'm thinking to myself, uh, our friends in the Coast Guard understand water that deep, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah there we <laughs> go. So. Uh, I look. Go ahead. S- sir, I wanted to ask you, you know, you're out there, you're talking to people as you're walking across the state. What are they saying to you? It's wonderful. I just was walking through a, a supermarket, uh, a parking lot, and this woman calls out, Admiral Sestak. And uh, she was a wonderful supporter who came up to me. I said, I just left doing a women's event because each day I walk in the shoes of another wonderful group of Pennsylvanians. And she said, I can't believe it. I read about this, and I, I can't believe I just ran into you. Look, Charles, I declared my candidacy for the United States Senate at Independence Hall, the Plaza of the People, and I said it's all about we, the people. And then I held up my combat boots that I wore on the ground in Afghanistan for a few short period of time, not like you Army and Marine Corps, and I said I'm going to walk in the shoes today of the veterans. And then the next day I walked in the shoes of the poor, the underserved, and the next day I did it for domestic abuse and human traffickers, the survivors, that is, of human trafficking. And then I did it on Small Business Today with Women, and I'll continue until I reach that Ohio border, just walking in the shoes to get to know them better, to gain their trust of Pennsylvanians every day. And we appreciate that, sir. We appreciate it very much, and we appreciate the effort. The thing that's remarkable to me is you are out there. Um, I'm sure you've got staff around somewhere, but you are out there. You're talking to people. You're finding out what they want, and uh, it's not a matter of what you want, but it's a matter of what they, the constituents, want. What are some of the interesting things that they've told you? I just finished a senior event as I began walking with a number of them afterward. And you know what the question was from a senior? She said, I heard you at a high school this morning before you came in Kassau. I said, yeah. She said, what message did you leave the next generation? Imagine that. Seniors, or it's not the question about Social Security or Medicare, which is so important to them, but caring about the next step of America. The second thing I hear when I turn to them and I say, and they ask me, why are you walking? I said, I always remembered what Scout, a precocious young girl, said in that great book, To Kill a Mockingbird, when her neighbor, who she'd never met and thought was strange, and she used to run past his porch, scared he would be mean or something, and then he saved her life. And when she walked him home, he went in. She turned on the porch and looked out there and said, you can never know a man till you walk in their shoes. And I'll never, ever forget that as I went around the state the last 42 years for 400 events, or as I walk now, when I tell them I'm trying to gain the trust of Pennsylvanians, that everyone to a man and a woman says, that's the number one issue in America. Who can we trust? Sir, you know, I just got done talking about some of our politician friends that are out there. Uh, what, 72 votes against the Affordable Care Act. We've got people down in Kentucky uh, trying to bring bring right to work into the state at the county level after they've been advised that, the, that you can't do that and you will be sued. And these are all things that taxpayers have to pay for because of political agendas. How do we stop that in this country? 
we have to replace those who tell us one thing here in Pennsylvania, for example, and then do something else down there. It's a democracy, if, if, without a question. Let me give you an example. Toomey once said, our president incumbent, Senator Toomey, the American people deserve more access to the world's best health care. Then he did exactly what you just mentioned. At the women's event today, they became aware that he voted against the free preventive screenings for pregnant women. He voted against the gestational diabetes screening we do so the child doesn't get diabetes. He voted against breastfeeding support, HPV testing. These are the things that he voted against that are harmful 30 times against the Affordable Care Act. In fact, if we had not passed the Affordable Care Act, because I was telling the seniors there today, because it was at a senior home where I talked about women, Medicare would run out in two years. So the only way to do this is what politicians don't do enough of, particularly when the health care, Obamacare, was being put out there the first time in that sea of anger with the Tea Party. Get out there and talk with the people. You can gain their trust if you're willing to be out there and explain it to them. And that's why I'm walking across Pennsylvania with an event or two every day to talk about their concerns as I listen to them. Admiral, what other things should we know about your campaign for the Senate? This campaign is about accountability. Answering for oneself, for one's deeds, not one's words. Too many of our politicians, and too often, Charles, of both parties, will say one thing and then vote the other way. I want to be held accountable for that policy that I will speak about at each event across America. I want to ensure that people know, whether they agree or disagree with me, that I will be there when the bullets start flying. So more than anything else, I want people to know that I will walk in their shoes from the New Jersey border all the way to Ohio, and when I get to Washington, D.C., I will continue to walk in their shoes, listening but being willing to be accountable for what I said and what I will do. Admiral, talk to us about education. I know uh, you were very forceful with your non-commissioned officers and your enlisted personnel. Make sure that they took advantage of the community college, the Navy, and other assets that were out there. Talk to us, what should we be doing nationally for young men and women, and maybe not so young men and women, who want to get an education today? This is the key question for our future, once you address the issue of trust. Our most valuable asset is our human capital. It's why wars are so destructive, as you know, Charles. We lose a lot of them, or they come home maimed. And by investing in human capital in their education, we can be all we can be. It's the long pole in the tent for economic superiority. We have to begin by pre-K up through early child, where every child has a great opportunity to get the rudder set correctly from pre-K through third grade. Second, we have to go back to those great days where the artisans were valued, those machinists, those in communications workers, those electricians, the ones I had in my first job in the Navy in my first division, and invest in the skills that can make manufacturing attractive again. I will do a manufacturing event tomorrow in Coatesville. Third, we do need to make a college affordable by shining a light on the colleges themselves and saying, we give you Pell Grants and Stafford loans to educate our youth. Open up your books. Let us see how you're spending our money to make sure that just because we're giving them more money to attend, you aren't raising your tuition unduly. And what we must do more than anything else is come to value our teachers. My mom was a high school math teacher. My sister, I was at her high school today, and for another teacher, they care. They are selfless. And we have got to stop denigrating those who are preparing the next generation to be all they can be for America. Admiral, I want to thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it. While you're out there, good luck, Godspeed. And we look forward to talking to you again here in the, in the near future. Charles, I appreciate it. And as I come through Allegheny County with about four stops, I'd be proud to either stop in the studio and maybe have you and the staff walk a few steps with you. Absolutely, sir. We'll get that done, and we appreciate it. In the meantime, have a great day. Thank you. Admiral Joe Sestek, candidate for Senate of Pennsylvania. I'm Charles Showalter.